Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus. Saints, we just want to say that we love you so much and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes, we do. We do. We do. Look, uh, it's a new month. October it is. October it is. And October is a good month to uh, bring it back all in the center. Amen. To bring it back all in the center. Think, think, rethink. Check, check, recheck. Okay, Lord, am I doing what it takes to please you? Am I, am I, am I, am I where I'm supposed to be? Right. And am I who I'm supposed to be? All of these things. Amen. There's always, I believe that we as saints shall always find a reason to check, check and recheck. Yeah, we should always find a reason to check, check and recheck. We should always find a reason to do better. Amen. And uh, we should always find reasons to keep going. Amen. Because it's built in. It's in the DNA. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And look, so we're going to walk on water. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And we're going to start at Revelation chapter 3. All right. Revelation chapter 3. And I pray that if you and I are not riding together, then we're walking on water together. Amen. I pray that while I'm reading, you're able to have your word as well. Or you can just listen and maybe go back and listen later. With your word, and we can walk on water together. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you had a beautiful weekend. And, uh, yeah, I pray the Lord say something on this pot beam that will enlighten you, inspire you uh, to keep going. Amen. And enlighten, enlighten you and inspire you to keep finding that reason to keep pressing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So we're going to go to Revelation chapter 3. It reads like this. And unto the angel of the church. And Sardis writes, These things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, and thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, thou that has received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch. I will come one, excuse me, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. My Lord. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis. Which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white. For they are worthy. Alright. So. And this is the first four verses. Alright. And the first four verses should really, really, really catch our attention, saints. You know. Um, Time is, time is, time is ticking. Time is winding up, and we have to be serious about what about where we are as a body, what we're doing, amen, and are we pleasing the Lord or not? You know what I'm saying? Because we can read these, and we can say, this is the church of Sardis, right? The Lord is speaking to the church of, of Sardis. But when when you look at it, he's talking to us. Amen. He's talking to us. The word of God does not expire. The word of God is not only in time past, but it's futuristic as well. Uh, 
Um, yeah, spiritual growth as well. What we want is, I was looking in my Bible, it's a, I guess it's a study Bible. I guess it's a study Bible. But uh, oh, and the reason I said that is because I have little footnotes at the bottom. And um, these footnotes at the bottom, I rarely ever read them because the Holy Ghost is my teacher. Amen. So I rarely, re- I rarely ever read the footnotes. But every now and then, as I'm skimming the page, something in the footnotes would catch my eye. Right? And they have scriptures and verses highlighted down under in the footnotes. They have um, the scripture... The chapter number and the chapter verse highlighted, okay, in the footnotes. And I see 219 here. And, of course, that catches my eye. Of course, that catches my eye. And this is just a chapter over. Well, it's just a page over. And I'm looking at it. Revelation 219 reads like this. And this is what, let's, let's read it. It says, <clears throat> it says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. All right. And the last to be more than the first. In my footnotes, it says, unlike the church at Ephesus, the church at Thyatira was not guilty of a lack of charity, which is love. Verse 4, significant spiritual growth was taking place. Amen. Significant spiritual growth was taking place. And then 2.20 says, Jezebel involved her followers in the same sins as those that infected the church at Paragamos. Fornication and eating things sacrificed unto idols, these sins are mentioned in, in reverse order from the letter to the church of Paragamos, verse 14, to call attention to the connection between the two. All right, so 219, 220. So 219 is saying, unlike the church of Ephesus, the church of uh, Thyatira was not guilty of a lack of charity. Significant spiritual growth was taking place. And then, but if you look at night, if you look at 20, looking at 220 in my footnotes, but if I go back up here to 20, it says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest. That woman, Jezebel, let me read it again. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. All right. So, this thing, verse 19, verse 20, in chapter 2, Revelations, this is one of the things that I feel like uh, could be could be uh, honed in on. And, and honed in, uh, honed don't sound like a good word. It don't sound like, it doesn't sound like a word at all. But I believe it should be paid attention to. Amen. I believe this should be paid attention to. I do. Because 19, that's good. Okay, I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works. So he 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 listed works twice. That means that means it really is a good a really is a good work going on. Amen. There really is a good work going on. Amen. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works. Works again. So work, 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 work. Amen. And works. Okay. And the last to be more 
than the first. Early rain, form, former rain, early rain, latter rain. Okay, so the latter should be greater than the first. Okay, um, and the last should be more than the first. 20, notwithstanding, hey, all that's good. I have a few things against you. Okay, Lord, well, what do you have against me? Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. All right. So, we can, bar- we can look at the spirit of Jezebel. Amen. And we know who Jezebel was, right? Let's dial it. Oh, let's, let's simplify this thing real quick. Because it, verse 19 is too good for us to uh, trip up on verse 20. You know what I'm saying? It's just too good for us to trip up on 20. So, 19, uh, 20, uh, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffers that woman Jezebel. Looking at the church. Who is Jezebel? All right. Who is Jezebel? Well, the Bible uh, simplifies the spirit of Jezebel in Revelations. Uh, he caught uh, as. Hold on just a second. All right. So the Bible simplifies it as. Stuff. Hang on, Saints. I'm getting it together. Where did that even come from? Oh, I know that. All right, so um, the Bible simplifies. I bind the spirit of distraction in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit. We're going to talk about this today. Amen. We're going to talk about this today. We are free. All right. Notwithstanding, verse 20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you. All right, because 19 is so nice. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience. Okay, um, works. Well, faith without works is dead. So that's good. You got that going for yourself. All right. And I want you to go down this checklist with me when it comes to your walk by faith. Amen. Because I believe I'm speaking to those that really, really, really mean God. Now you can't come, you can't come over here to the channel and don't mean God, Amen. Because if you do, you just get hit upside the head every day, Amen. And that's that's not. I don't know anybody that likes to be hit upside the head every day, Amen. So if you're still coming over here to the channel, it's because you really want this, Amen. You, we really want this, and if we really want this. Then we will take heed to what the Lord is saying. Amen. He that hath an ear, let he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of Lord what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Amen. Okay, so verse nineteen I was saying is packed with a lot of good stuff. So if verse if verse nineteen is where you are found, then verse twenty when we begin to dissect verse 20, you are going to be a okay with the things that need to be taken care of. That's just a given. If you are found in 19, then you have all of the ingredients to go ahead on and take care of verse 20. That's just a given. Because one, he says, I know thy works. One, you are willing to work. There's not a lot of people that's willing to work and not just work a job. Hey, I'm working a job. I got the money. But we, we're willing to work on ourselves. Amen. We're willing to look in that mirror and say, Lord, I see this about me. I know you don't like this. So, Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you to cleanse me and wash me. Amen. Lord, I see this about me and I don't like it. So, the work. We're willing to work. I, I know thy works. It says in charity. Now the Bible, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, begins to take a whole chapter, okay, to tell us about what charity is. Now about it: faith, hope, charity. These three. Now, do we need faith as a saint? Yes, we need faith. Do we need hope as the saints of God? Yes, we need hope. But the Bible says, now about in faith, hope, and charity. The Bible says, out of these three, 
the greatest of these three. Now you can't without faith. You know it's impossible to even please God. You don't have faith. You can't even please me. You can't. You won't. All right. If you don't have faith, and the Bible says that now about it, faith, hope, and charity. These three, faith without it, you can't even please God. But charity is greater than that. Okay, so I know thy works and charity. So now we have works, we have charity, something that is even greater than than faith, and it's even greater than hope. Good God! All right, it's even great. It's even greater than faith. It's even greater than hope. And it says, "I know thy works and charity." So you have works and you have charity it says and service so service to charity is not even service amen works is not service all right work so he said it works he said charity and service so these these things are different you know what i believe that i'm going to come back on uh this uh this afternoon maybe tonight maybe around mm, five-ish, six-ish, all right, and the cool of the day, amen, and we're going to talk about service, we're going to talk about, we're going to dissect this, all right, we're going to talk about works, we're going to talk about um, charity, and we're going to talk about service, all right, and we're going to talk about faith, We're going to talk about patience. We, and, um, all right. We're going to talk about works. We're going to talk about charity. We're going to talk about service, faith, and patience. Because these things, I believe we need to dial in these some more. Now, if you follow us on Podbean and you, um, if you, you click that. Every time you see the notification, you click it. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, daughter of Zion. Amen. God bless you uh, for being a part of us. We're going somewhere. We are the bride of Christ. And God bless you. Amen. God bless you. And we're going to talk about these things because we need to know in depth what what are these. You know, a lot of times you can look at somebody and you can think, hey, because you see the light of the Lord in them, you can feel like they're a mature or they're so mature till they're at a standard. And you can be so wrong. You know what I'm saying? You can be so wrong because you're seeing the God in them. Do you know that the Lord was been here ever since the beginning? Yeah. So if they, if God is within them, then you, you're going to see that maturity. But you, it's because you're seeing God in them, Christ in them, the hope of glory. But it doesn't mean they themselves are have come to in their mind have come to that place of maturity that you're seeing you're seeing the lord but this is why the lord says i'm walking with you i'm walking with you because because you see mama walking with the baby it doesn't mean the baby know everything mama knows but you see the baby walking you see mama it's it's not good to always uh, have the mindset that well the baby is walking with her so so you 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 know what you know what that mom you know what your mama know that's not that's not wise it is the enemy's job to cause us to um forfeit what what the Lord is doing with us it's the enemy's job to cause us to be at a place where we we try to walk faster than where we are. It's the enemy's job to cause us to be at a place to not walk at all when we can walk fast. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if we're walking faster than what we're supposed to or if we're walking slower than what we're supposed to. His job is to just make sure we get found off the word. But the Lord is like, I'm walking with you. And when it comes to us walking slow, we're going to walk slow. It's not for you to try to walk fast when I'm walking slow with you. 
And then when we're walking fast, it's not for you to try to walk slow because you want to chill out in the land and, and you want to you wanna scope out what's over here and what's over there. I didn't say that it was time to, to, to go and, and try to find treasure. Right? So the leading of the Lord and the giving over of our will to him. So Lord's willing, saints. I did say Lord's willing. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about works, charity, service, faith, and patience. Because these things we have to have. And in order for us to be able to stand against 20. Verse 20. Verse 20 says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. All right, because thou sufferest, and let's look that up. Um, okay, because thou sufferest, why you want to be slow today? Why you want to type in the wrong word today? Saints, if you are not plugged into our website, it's she's a forerunner dot com. She's a forerunner dot com. Go over there and check it out. All right. Um, we're about to add some new things over there. And um you can also subscribe to the channel. And there are things like if I if I write something, it'll come directly to your email. All you have to do is scroll to the bottom, hit subscribe to the channel, and the only and any any updates that happen, if I go in and let you, I'm gonna uh, start utilizing that as a tool. If I go in, I'm, when I go in and update things, um, it goes directly to your email, right? It doesn't bother you through the day, and you just check your, you know how you check your emails just whenever you get a chance, and uh, if we have any updates, it'll come right to your email. And, uh, uh, yeah, so if, if you can, if you will, go over to she's a forerunner.com and subscribe to that, to the email. And then the, the updates that we have, it'll come directly to your email. Uh, a lot of, sometimes I don't come on the pod beam. Sometimes the Lord just give me a quick word of encouragement and I might write it in or on the channel and then I send it and it goes right to your email. Amen. Uh, instead of instead of getting spam in your email, or instead of getting somebody trying to sell you something in your email, how about a word of encouragement to your email? Amen. I think that's great. I think it's a great tool to have. And uh, yeah, so while we're looking up the word suffereth, sufferest, uh, she's a forerunner dot com. Go over there for me, please, and subscribe to the channel. It's not a channel. It's a website. Subscribe to the website and uh, you can get those up. You can get those, the updates, the information and all that good stuff. Uh, is she's S H E S A. Okay. The letter A and then four F O R E runner R U N N E R dot com. All right. She's a forerunner dot Calm. And I believe I said that right. <clears throat> um, but yes, let's see. S U F F E R E S T. But yes, go over there, please. And um subscribe to the website and that way you can get the updates. I'm probably most definitely going to start going live over there. Yeah, she's a forerunner.com. S H E S A F O R E R U N N E R dot com. Amen. And uh, in a few days, Lord's willing, I'm going to um, explain what a forerunner is. Amen. Most people know, some people don't. So I am going to explain what the Lord gave it to me to be she's a forerunner.com all right um yeah so 
Yeah, it won't cost you nothing. It don't cost you nothing. Go on over there and hit subscribe to the website and <clears throat> and get those things sent to your email. Um, Sufferest. A workout or race in the arena of endurance sports that involve prolonged suffering on the part of all who participate. Prolonged suffering. It says an activity in which all participants ache, agonize, ail, endure, sufferest. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel. So, verse 20, that woman, Jezebel. Do you know that in a church setting that's sick, a church setting that is ill, in a church setting that it just doesn't have the right footing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have the right footing as far as decision making. It's hard to make the right decision. And a lot of times it comes from Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Ego. Yeah. A lot of time it comes from ego. Who do I feel like deserves to to do this? Who do I feel like deserve to? Who has been paying their tithes good? Who has been paying offering good? Ego. It's, it's ego. It's man's ego. It's woman's ego. Amen. And a lot of times, because we allow ego... To be uh, in the holy place, we make decisions out of our flesh. Yeah, we make decisions out of our flesh because of ego. Has nothing to do with the Lord. Nothing. Amen. And this is where verse 20 comes from. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Okay. So is thou that the, the book of Revelation. Now we know that a man can. People say that men can have a Jezebel spirit. But to me. I believe that men have the Ahab spirit. Right. And the Ahab spirit is one that is passive. The Ahab spirit is one that let women usher up authority and it's it's not really authority in a um bold way it's not authority in a bold way but it's authority in a seductive way you understand it's authority in a i'm going to con my way right i'm going to con my way it's subtle like a snake i'm going to con my way into getting everything that i want and you're going to do it you know what i'm saying it's not a bold, I'm going to make a stand type of way. But it's a cunning, seducing, seductive kind of way to get what I want. And I'm going to get what I want. It's not just going to be from you, but it's going to be from every man in this place. I'm going to make sure every man in this place is seduced by me. Because I am going to, and, it, and, I, and Lord Holy Ghost help me explain this. I am going to make sure every man give me what I want. What is it that I want? I want a place in the membrane to say that if I do come at you, right? If I do put my feet on your path to come at you, you will be succumbed by me. Amen. You will. And this is the place, and this is the spirit of a, this is the spirit of Jezebel. I want to make sure that every man in my way, in my path, 
I want to make sure that I have them at a place to where if I do come, if I do put my foot on their path, that there's a door there that I've created spiritually. There's a door here. I've created every, these men around me, I've created a door. All right. And this door is if I decide, if I decide to put my feet on this path, married or not, if I decide to put my feet on this path, that door that I've already created is there. You understand? That door that I've already created is there. And I can walk that path and walk straight past wife, straight past um fiance, straight past girlfriend, straight past significant other. I can walk straight past I've got my eyes on her or he he has his eyes on her. I can walk straight past all of that because I've created a door with this individual spiritually. You understand? This is the spirit of Jezebel. And as I'm describing this, I do believe that a man can have a Jezebelic spirit. Because there are men that do the same thing as well. I'm going to create a door in the spirit. Which means if I ever decide to put my feet on this path, I can walk past anything you got going on in your life and walk straight into you. That's not good, saints. It's not good. And if you have a door like that, you need to pray that God remove this door. Because Jesus is the only one that should have that type of access to us. Jesus is the only one to, that should have that type of access. Amen. Because it's, it's, it's not good if we allow flesh to have that type of access. It's not. All right. So verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. That thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. So, Jezebel, okay, she calls herself a prophetess. Jezebel. Jezebel calls herself a prophetess. Um, Jezebel is the one that people choose to suffer along with. And let me say this. Most, why is it that most of the time it's the Jezebels that most of the time ministers, pastors, teachers, reachers, prophets, apostles, evangelists, it's the Jezebels that most of the time they don't mind getting up and talking to people. They don't mind the Jezebels getting up and preaching to people. They don't mind the Jezebels. The Je- oh, let Jezebel. Je- they don't mind the Jezebels getting up to do this stuff. Why? Why? Because it is something not well. Within that individual. Is something not well. Within that body of Christ. Is something not well. Within that organization. If this is the only one. These are the only ones. That I allow up. To speak. Over what we say. Who is God's people. These are the only ones we allow up to speak. The Jezebel. The Jezebel spirit. This is the only ones we allow up. Why? She makes me feel good. She makes me feel good about who I am. Who I've grown to be. She makes me feel good because I look and I see error. So because I can see error. I can let her get up. Let her speak. And I feel good. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest. Now, sufferest, that word just is like castor oil. I don't know if your mom or dad ever tried to give you castor oil, but it is hard to go down. It is 
it, it, it like it, it, it it's like it want to sit in the back of your throat. And even when you done swallowed it, it's like it want to come back up and reverse. You know what I'm saying? Casserole. When I look at the word suffereth, and every time I read it, it's like one of those words that's hard to swallow. Why? Because what does it mean? It means a workout or race in the arena of endurance sports that involves prolonged suffering on the part of all who participate. So everybody who participate. In the that woman Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to teach to seduce. Now, in verse twenty, teaching and seducing is. Almost one in the same. Because most often times. A Jezebelic spirit. Is not going to per se. Speak to you. And tell you. Uh, you know certain things. But they're going to teach you. Seductive ways. You understand. So to teach and to seduce. These are both one in the same. These are both. They're like two made one flesh, right? Two made one. To teach and seduce, I'm going to show you how to be seductive. I'm going to show you how to be, okay, one that can create a door that no matter if this man is married, engaged, talking to someone, has a significant other, it don't matter. I'm going to teach you how to create a door to where you can walk straight past all that. And it's called hijacking. All right. It's called hijacking. And the Lord allow, allowed me to do a study on the uh, hijacking. And if you ever have a chance, saints, especially you men of God, you really need to look up what hijacking is. Amen. Hijacking is spiritual. It is a spiritual thing. And it caused me to understand more how men, some men, even some women, can find themselves uh, in a place, in a space, to where they done slept with somebody else, and just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, boom, it happens. And after it happens, they're like, oh my God, what did I do? Now, this is not a reason to go out and do this. It's not. But there is a such thing called hijacking, all right? And the hijacking is if it's because, it happens because, or, or when we're not watching and praying. He told us to watch and pray. Least we enter into temptation. Watch and pray. But when we don't watch and pray. Hijacking is right there. Waiting to claim individuals. What is hijacking? Hijacking is when the body. Uh, it begins to act. It's almost like it's acting without even the mind. It's almost like the body begins to act without the mind. Amen. And we know if you are in a beautiful marriage and you're married to a beautiful individual, beautiful man of God, beautiful daughter of Zion, we know that in order to go out and and just sleep around and do all this other stuff, well, not just sleep around, but I'll say go out and uh, commit adultery one time we know that that you can't you can't seriously be thinking right right you can't seriously be thinking right so there are cases where the mind of an individual is hijacked and it's when um when we are succumbed by the flesh in a certain instant in a certain moment we're succumbed by the flesh thank you holy ghost we're succumbed by the flesh. We're in a moment of weakness. Even though I know I'm a saint. I know I'm a child of God. I know I'm a daughter of Zion. Being in a moment. In the midst of a trial after trial after trial. Finding myself in a moment. Where I'm weak. I still know who I am. I'm weak. And as I'm continuing this walk by faith, 
even though I feel like I don't have enough to give, I don't even have enough for myself, I continue this walk by faith and I find myself, and I don't even know that I'm in a weak point. I don't even know that I'm in a weak spot. I just know that the waves of life has just been knocking me down over and over again. And I know myself and the Lord in me that causes me to stand back up, get back up, stand up. Knowing that I'm walking this walk by faith, knowing that I've been going through trial after trial after trial, knowing that I can stand some strengthening. I need iron to sharpen me. Iron sharpens iron. Knowing that I need a sharpening, knowing that I need restoration, knowing that I need rejuvenation, knowing that I need a reset, knowing that I need to find my footing again. All right, eyes closed, we're talking, you and I. Knowing that I need to find my footing again. And I'm still walking this walk by faith. Yet something comes along on my path. And grabs me out of nowhere. Everything else is still there. But in this moment right here in time. When this man... This door, your the daughter, or the or the woman. All right, this man grabs me out of nowhere, or this woman grabs you out of nowhere, and in this instant, all of your thoughts have subsided. Everything you've got going on in your life have subsided. You have children. You're not thinking about any children. Out of nowhere, this woman grabs you. Out of nowhere, this man grabs you. And in the moment, it's Like Adam, it's like Eve. It's like when Adam first laid eyes on Eve, it's like I'm woman, he's man, or it's like she's woman, I'm man. You understand? Everything else in that hijacking moment, everything else, I'm not thinking about everything else, in that moment, I am woman, he's man, this feels good. And do you know? That is in these instances right here that there are many, many vulnerable women that have found themselves in a place where they became intimate to a sexual place and it took, it took just years to get out of that hijacking moment. Just that one hijacking moment. Just one moment. Do you know there's many men out there, many men that have been found in a hijacking moment. And inside of this hijacking moment, they slip and have done things and for years it's taking them years to get out of that one moment because sexual intercourse and all that followed the hijacking moment amen and so 
how, you may say, sister, how do you know this? How do you know this? I'm speaking to you by the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking to you uh, with things that the Lord is bringing to my mind. The Holy Ghost says, I'll bring all things to your remembrance. Well, the Lord is bringing, there are things when I speak to you, the Lord brings things. He pushes things to the forefront to, sh- to la- allow me to explain what these things are. Glory be to God. So there are many that have found themselves in the hijacking moment. And if you take these same individuals and you take this man and this, his wife finds out, his fiance finds out, His significant other finds out. The one he's leaning toward, she's leaning toward him, they find out. And this man is trying all he can to explain what happened. And because the woman he's trying to explain to, and she's never been through nothing like that. Ain't never had, what you talking about? What you talking about? Oh, 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 so your clothes just fell off. It's not that his clothes just fell off. It's not. It's not that her clothes just fell off. It's not. And a lot of times when you try to explain this to an end of, to somebody that's connected to you, a wife, a husband, they, they will not understand because it's a, it's spiritual. It is. It's spiritual. And even in that, that's, that's on the negative side. But do you know that there's a hijacking on the, on the positive side? It is a hijacking on the positive side. And the hijacking on the positive side is when we allow the Lord to take over us. And when he take over us and he lead us to do this. All right. Now do this. Now do that. Now do this and do that. It's the Lord in operation. But on the negative side, there is a, there is a hijacking, saints. There is a such thing as that hijacking. I'm telling you it is. And and when the Lord began to allow me to, to, to research this thing, I was just in shock and awe that there really are a lot of innocent men out there that have found themselves in this moment. And when they say, honey, I promise she didn't mean nothing to me. It didn't mean nothing to me. I'm telling you. Now, there are men out there. They sleep around. And they say it too. It didn't mean nothing when they get caught. It didn't mean that. It didn't mean that. No, if they, you, you're not just getting hijacked and hijacked and hijacked. This, this is something you want. You, you, you taking extra clothes. You going out like you working, but you taking extra clothes in a bag. No, that's not hijacking. That's not hijacking. But hijacking, this is something that can happen to an individual. And this is something, it happens out of nowhere. And it's just like the moment that I just described to you where in that moment, everything else leaves. And in that instant, I am woman, he is man. Right? How did we even get on that? Somebody need to hear that. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that. I'm like, Lord, how did we? The Lord hijacked me. All right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right. So it's not for me to find out how we got on it. Amen. But that is a such thing. And when the Lord allowed me to begin to do that study, I began to pray. Um, I began to pray against those moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lord, thank you for keeping me. And in a hijacking moment, you, when you, have you ever heard anybody pray? Thank you for keeping me even when I don't want to be kept. That's one of those moments where you're not thinking about being kept. I don't, you're not thinking about nothing, nothing. All right. Nothing. And, um, I'm thankful that, I'm thankful that the Lord never let me be in a hijacking moment to where it led to fornication or it led to physically having sexual intercourse. 
You know what I'm saying? And if you're one of the ones that have been through a moment like this and you you ended up when you when you look, you realize, oh my God, what have I done? Saints, what there there are several things that you need to do. One is you need to ask for forgiveness. Ask God for forgiveness. Two, uh, a good thing to do, if you can, is break that soul tie with that person. Tell that person, look, this is, I, I really am sorry that this happened. Is It was not my desire to hurt you, but this can't be. You know, this is, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Apologize. And three, if you are married, you got, you know, all that, you know, there is, there's, there, pray, pray, saints, in an instant like that, apologize to the Lord, and then you have to break that soul tie, amen, and then if you're married, you know, it's, you, you, it takes prayer, it takes understanding, understanding that your partner is not going to understand what you're talking about. Not. Because if they haven't been through that, they don't know what you're talking about. You, what you mean you didn't, what you mean you didn't know? What, what, what you mean you, what you, what you mean? You know? And, it, and, and as a female, it may, and if you're a male, if you're a man out there that this happened to, it makes us more angry when you say that you didn't, you know, when you, the more you try to explain, if you've ever been through a hijacking moment, the more you try to explain, the more angry we get. Because we just want you to say you were wrong. This is something you did. We just want you to own up to it. Instead, because to us, if you try to explain hijacking to somebody that don't understand, it sounds like excuses. That you're trying to get out of something that you didn't did. And, and, and most often time, that's why it's demonic. Because most often time, it's going to end in divorce. Because what we see is you won't own up to what you've done. You're just steady making excuses about, you know, it didn't mean nothing. It just happened out of nowhere. And you didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know what you was doing. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and, and it's demonic. Because while the devil sits back and enjoy the show, he knows that that was a hijacking moment. He knows that he caught you while you were weak, while you were vulnerable, okay? While you done had trial after trial after trial after trial in life. He knows he caught you slipping. He caught you where you, you weren't praying a lot. He caught you. And he knows the more you try to be honest about what you what you trying to explain that happened, the more you try to do right and explain, the more that woman is going to resent you. Because to her, it sounds foolish. So he sits back and enjoy. He just sits back and enjoy. If you don't know what hijacking is, you need to look that up, saints. You need to look that up. And pray against that. Pray against it. Lord, thank you for keeping me when I don't want to be killed. Those prayers in your account, you'd be surprised what those prayers in your account does if you if you're ever found in a moment like this. If you ever found in a moment like this, and th those prayers come back right in the nick of time when you don't want to be kept, you're not thinking about being kept. The Lord is there to say no, no. Amen. So. Those doors is not good to have those doors uh, open to where anybody in this person at any given time can come into this door and get to me. That's not good. Amen. That's not good. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. How, how do seduction happen? How, how does she teach 
and seduce my servants. Now, when we look at the word servants, we think because we're talking about that woman, Jezebel, she called herself. That's too much. Okay, listen to it. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, female, okay, um, Jezebel, female name, okay, which calleth herself, female pronoun, all right, a prophetess, female again, okay. Hey, baby. Hey, I'm still in line. Hold on. I'm almost done. Can it wait? Okay, hold on. I'm almost done. I got like a few minutes. Close the door back. Thank you. All right, so um, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffers that woman, female, Jezebel, female name, which calleth herself female. A prophetess, female, to teach and seduce my servants. Because we have four female um, words, okay? These words, they point toward the female, okay? We have four. Now, after this comma, to teach and to seduce my servants. So, when he, when he says, teach and seduce my servants, we automatically think of what? What do we think of when the Bible says, to teach and seduce my servants. We think of men, right? Because all of these are pointing to the female. Now, to teach and seduce my servants, we think of men. Da, 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 da. But guess what? It's not just men that this scripture is talking about. She teach and seduce women as well. Yes. She teach and seduce women as well. I'm going to seduce these women to be just like me, a fornicator. I'm going to seduce these women to act just like me. All right. I'm going to teach and seduce them. Okay. I'm going to teach and seduce. Says to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. So because this person, this woman, she gets to get up and teach everybody. Now, we have to suffer long because all of us see all the flaws and all the no-nos. Okay. An activity in which all participants ache and agonize. And we have to ache and agonize when we hear this. Ache and agonize because of the type of person she is. Ache and agonize and, and endure the t a teaching from this unclean vessel that he keep putting up over us. It's ache and agonize. And L, right? Participants of this. And it says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce. So she's just not teaching and seducing the men. She's teaching and seducing the women, too. Yeah. Because why? Well, we're watching how she act and what she the stuff she do. And, hey, it looks like it's flying. So let's do what she's doing. Right? So it's not just the men that's being seduced. It's women too. Okay. Prophet is to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. And that's not all she does. She don't teach and seduce the servants to commit fornication. We're on 59, I'm aware. But she seduced them too to eat things sacrificed to idols. The Bible says, and I gave her space to repent. Of her fornication. And she repented not. Amen. So this is something that we sh we need to hear. Amen. Those that have an ear. Let them hear. What the spirit of God is saying to the church today. Amen. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. Jezebel found it in herself. Not to repent. Amen. But Hezekiah. Man turned his face to the wall. Amen. Who are you? Are you one that repents? Are you one that turns your face to the wall? Or are you like Jezebel? Are you making excuses for who you are and what you're doing? We love you. And until next time, be blessed.